Well, now, guess what? I have a loan of 130,000. That's not a big deal. The big deal is that this loan is actually from seven different mobile lending apps. And guess what? This is a situation that is with majority of Kenyans. And this is an individual who called me with this kind of a state. And the amount of money that he earns at the end of the month is 28,000 Kenyan shillings. And he's expecting to actually use the 28,000 towards repayment of this specific kind of a loan. And guess what? This loan is actually accruing more interest as the time goes. If there is a call that I usually receive most of the time for my clients is people who are facing what we call the unhealthy debts. You see, there are two types of debts. We have the healthy debts and we have the unhealthy debt. And the very first question that I always ask when somebody calls me with this kind of a situation, I ask them, where did you channel that money that you took as a loan? Most of them, they tell you, hey, I was late at payment of the rent. I did take and pay the rent. I took that loan and uh, I bought myself like a carpet. I bought myself like, like this individual told me, hey, I took this loan. I... Um, you know, I did, I did some shopping, <clears throat> I did some, uh, you know, house makeover and such kind of a things and the money was gone. You see, I took this money in the belief that, hey, with this amount of money that I'm getting at the end of the month of 28,000, I'll be able to pay back this loan. But guess what happens? You take a loan from App A, and I'm going to explain to you step by step so that you understand. This is quite a quite a popular problem that is out there. And I came to realize this problem is actually with the people who are employed. These people who do the Juakali thing are actually not facing this kind of a challenge. But these guys who are doing uh, the or the, the working corporate worlds and such kind of a thing are the ones that are facing this kind of a challenge. You know why? Let's say um, I said one thing. The origin of this problem is that one thing, A, you do not have a budget. Budget with you or for you, it's actually an X. You don't have it. So what do you do? That amount of money that you're getting at the end of the month, let's take a this case example of 28,000. You do not have any budget, meaning you are likely to squander this money before the other money shows up. So what do you do? If you squander this money before the other money shows up and you've got some needs to get, so what do you do? You channel yourself towards what? Getting what? <clears throat> a loan. So what do you do nowadays? Simple. You download the app. Let's say we call it that app A. You download the app A and then app A gives you like, let's say 8,000. 8,000, right? And they tell you this money is to be paid next month and obviously at a profit or rather we call it at an interest. Depends on who is arguing with that money. Now, the point is you get that amount of money. But remember, you have not healed yourself or you've not worked on yourself on the problem of budgeting. I want to show you how you get yourself to unhealthy debt. So you get the loan A because you did not budget your money well and therefore you did not manage to reach the other money. Therefore, you need to get something to sustain yourself before you get the other money. So you get your loan of 8,000. And again, this 8,000, all right, after the one month ends because you're supposed to repay this 8,000, the initial money of 28,000 shows up. And this money, remember, you still have the same problem. You do not know how to budget or you don't even know how to budget or you just ignore budgeting. Therefore, if the 28,000 is not enough before you having a loan, now you have a loan in existence. Therefore, it means probably you would manage to pay this loan. So probably you you disregard the loan or say you pay the loan. <clears throat> so once you pay the loan, it means now you have way less than 28,000. So you have what? 20,000. Now, if you have 20,000, therefore it will create more loophole or more hole in terms of the gap that you need to fill than it was last time. So what do you do? You go ahead and lend or get another loan of 8,000 because you know you're a good person. You're an amazing person. They give you and probably they increase your interest rate or rather they increase your, uh, the amount of money that you can be able to borrow that they call it a limit. Then let's say they give you 15,000, all right? You take the 15,000. You're good. All right, if you add the 8,000 here, you are nice because you already have your back your 28,000 and you have a 7,000 on top. But now it is less than the previous 8,000 that you had. Therefore, it means you still have some gaps to fill. And therefore, by next month, you need to pay yourself what? You need to pay back the 15,000. And of course, it's more than 15,000. So if you take 15,000 from the 28,000, you remain with 13,000. I want to show you how people get themselves into unhealthy debt. And remember, all this cash that you're getting, you're not channeling it towards investment. Meaning this cash is actually not generating any income. You're actually funding what we call the consumables. Consumables, all right? And these consumables are things that do not generate any income. You get this loan, you buy maize flour, you buy wheat flour, you go out there, you pay school fees, still a consumable anyway. Uh, you go out there with this amount of money, probably you 
you know, go and drink and maybe grab yourself a coffee, maybe you buy a carpet, maybe, you know, you buy yourself some clothing and what have you. All those are consumables because at the end of the day, the loan or debt should always be channeled towards income generating uh, way. Therefore, what do you do? You get yourself the 13,000. Therefore, it can't be enough. So what you do, you opt to pay this loan so that at least you can be able to get the money. You pay this loan and probably they add you an interest up to what or rather limit up to 20,000. And again, what do you realize? You realize that if you were to pay back all this amount of money plus the interest, you're remaining with nothing from this. So what do you decide? Okay, and I'm assuming you're a good person, you're able to pay this back money. So what do you decide? You decide to disregard this loan, all right? You disregard it for like one month and then they keep on calling you, calling you, calling you. So what do you do? You decide to go to the app B. So the app B, maybe because you are starting up with the app B, they give you a loan, maybe let's say 10,000. 10,000, you'll be able to repay a little bit of the 20,000 that you did borrow from this area and then because you cannot be able to cater for all that loan you think of up cds and by the time you realize you get yourself to the seven number of apps that you have the loan that you have to repay back to them and when you reach this particular point remember one thing you have actually punched way above your weight you do not have the financial muscle to go ahead and actually repay all the seven loans and guess what happens? Remember when you are registering for these apps, because there's something in common, they, they all share. Number one, they tell you, allow the app to access your contact. You say yes, allow the app to access your voice recording. You say yes, allow the app to access your phone book. You say yes, allow your, like you say, everything, accept, 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 accept. And then by the time you realize they are calling everyone from your family members, from your acquaintances, meaning the guys whom you work with, from your cohorts and whoever they're out there in your phone book, they are calling them to try to squeeze you to paying back their money. And remember, this is not one person who is calling you. These are seven different companies that are calling you. And they all want to get the, back their 130,000, the accumulation. This is the accumulation of the money that you have. Or maybe if you were to arrange A, B, C, D, whatever, up to the seventh one, the point is cumulatively you need to pay back the 130,000. 30,000 out of 28,000 at the end of the month. Now, when you reach this particular point, now, what do you do? That's the elephant in the room. What exactly do you do at this particular point? All right. Now, this is the situation. The client who called me told me, hey, the situation that I am right now, they're actually contemplating coming back home or coming home to actually auction me and be able to pay back their money by them selling my properties or the things that I do have. I asked them, or ask the him, uh, do you have what we call like a collateral, something that you can be able to liquidate to be able to repay all these loans? And he said, no, I do not have nothing. The only thing that I do have, it's an old motorbike. The old motorbike, I, I asked him, how much can it fetch? At most, can only fetch 45,000. Let's say even if you liquidate that motorbike at 45,000, at least you get yourself to around around 90,000 around there, okay? That's the amount of money that you have back to repay. But remember, you're getting this out of the 28,000. But don't forget this. Out of this 28,000, what's happening? You have to pay your rent, right? All right? Number two, you have to pay for your food, right? Number three, you have to actually pay for your what? Transport, even if you're using a motorbike, you also need to pay to, uh, for fueling. Let's just call it transport. All right. Out of this, obviously, you need to develop to save. All the savings are expected to come from this place. And the other one you also need, maybe say you have kids, you need to pay school fees and what have you. You see, by the time you realize, you've actually gotten yourself into a ditch. And instead of you stop digging and figure it out how you can get out of the ditch, you're still digging. Meaning, by actually borrowing from more loans or rather from more mobile app lending up so that at least you can be able to liquidify this. I told him, guess what? Where you are, you're already on a mess. Stop digging. Figure out this number of rooms. I told him, hey, guess what? Arrange all these loans, starting all the way from the biggest to the smallest. We call it the snowball effect, right? It's called the snowball, snowball effect. Incorporate this whenever you want to settle up your loan. Start from the biggest one. Let's say the biggest one, you owe them, let's say, 35,000. All right, keep on arranging, arranging them in a descending order to a point whereby, let's say, you have an app that you you owe them 5,000. So at that particular point, you ask yourself, hey, guess what? You ain't going to be able to pay all these guys in a single month. That's for a fact. So what you do, there are three ways on how you can approach all these loans. Number one, you may decide out of the 28,000 that you're getting at the end of the month, you may decide. This now means that you have to call yourself a sacrifice. You have to sacrifice for some things. You can decide each and every month I'll be setting aside 6,000 to repay for all this loan. 
A, you may decide to actually get the 6,000 divide by 7, right? You divide by 7 because you have 7 different apps and then be able to be sending something little to all these guys to at least make them not call you each and every time. Let's say approximately here, uh, maybe gives you like a sub couple of hundreds, maybe let's say like 900. Each of them gives you, you give them 900 Kenyan shillings. So you wire 900 here, 900, 900, 900 up to the seventh one. All right. That's option A. At least everyone has gotten something and the smallest loan actually is likely to be paid way faster compared to the big loan. That is option number one. Option number two, you may decide to be setting aside the same same amount of money or 7,000. But what you do now is you start attacking these loans from the smallest to the biggest. For example, this 6,000 is enough to clear the very first loan. You are done. Now you are remaining with six apps. That's how you do it. Guess what happens? Once you do exactly this, you get that motivation to actually go ahead and do this specific thing. Now, the other thousand bob that is remaining, you can be able to uh, smash the next uh, loan that you have there. The next time you get the 6,000, attack the other one. The next time you get, attack the other one, attack the other one. By the time you realize, it will take you time. I didn't promise that it will happen. All the time that you're paying all the other five, the biggest one is still waiting. And probably they are making millions of calls. And when they call you, sometimes it's good you tell them the truth. I'm in a situation whereby I'm actually having multiple lenders who did lend me some money and I'm trying to actually attack you for attack them all the way from the down there to the up but in most cases you find some people opt to go for the 600 weight divided by the number of apps so that at least everyone can get something at the end of the day see i realized with this kind of apps whenever you pay them a little bit of cash they actually shut because they are seeing you're trying to do some effort so it all depends if you want to attack it from the smallest to the biggest or if you want to divide the amount of money that you decide that you're gonna pay them back amazing or the very first thing that you're supposed to do is this consider having a something that you for example this individual was about to be auctioned and what happens when you get auctioned is that they sell your properties at a throwaway price when i say properties i mean like the household things that you have they can come and grab your couch can grab your telly can grab your phone can grab your all those things that they can be able to liquidate for them to pay back their thing but i hardly hear that the lending apps can actually auction you I don't know the actuality of that thing, but hey, guess what? They may not auction you, but most of the time, them calling you and calling those people whom you respect, it's actually so, you know, uh, it's sort of disheartening. It's kind of so much weird and something of sort, all right? So those are the, just the areas on how you are supposed to do so. But before all this problem comes in, this is what you're supposed to ask yourself. Where is the problem? Where did the rain started beating me? All right. So you're supposed to ask yourself what exactly is going out there, because if you do not understand what's going on, it will be very hard for you to actually go there and be able to handle or cater for this problem. So all what I need to tell you is this. After all the occasion, remember one thing, the loan should be used to fund uh, the things that you actually invest on that can actually generate some income. Number two, make sure that you have the budget of the income that you have at the end of the month so you don't get yourself into problem. Number three, make sure that all the occasion, if you get yourself in such a situation, arrange those loans from the biggest to the smallest. Attack them from the smallest to the biggest because this one gives you the motivation. That's for a fact and that is exactly how you get yourself. But if you realize you're in a blink of them being auctioned, then you better sell the properties by yourself because you are likely to fetch the best price in the market rather than them coming on board and getting it and selling it at a throwaway price. And I've said that is the situation that, that can only apply when you get yourself in a situation that is quite horrible, irreversible and that kind of a thing. And guess what guys, this is just but an example of me uh, or what kind of a content that I usually post on this channel. So if you don't want to miss any of my good videos each and every day about investment and money, make sure that at least you down below there, there is a button written subscribe, hit that magical button, turn the notification bell and like this video. And by only doing that, a whole YouTube will notify you whenever I upload a new good video. And if you would like to have a conversation with me, meaning a talk, my number is on the description of this specific video video you can grab it give me a call or a text or if you would like to get the booklets about financial management investments and what have you i have them a book only goes for 280 all right for now it's a goodbye and don't forget to subscribe for now it's a goodbye see you there